Welcome back to SF Vortex, everybody. We've made it down to the war room, and joining us today, Anthony C. Ferranti, a freelance writer and critic for a number of genre publications. Also, Bradford May is here, director of NBC's upcoming disaster miniseries, Asteroid, which I read for that, you know. I know, you were in there. You did very well. Oh, thank you. Very I guess, well. I guess you guys went with an actor. Well, uh, and also, he, of course, has directed two of the Dark Man, the two Dark Man films. And also, Warren James is here, host of Hour 25 Sci-Fi Radio. Thanks for joining us, Warren. And by the way, thanks for letting us come down and be a part of that 25-year celebration. In fact, uh, it was a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun down there. In fact, let's take a glimpse at our own rocket scientist at work. Fire. Welcome to Hour 25. Imagine a group mind bound together by their love of science fiction. Imagine a radio show whose guests have included Nobel Prize winning scientists, winners of Hugo's, Nebula's, Emmys, and Oscars. Now imagine that that radio show has been on the air for 25 years. You know, I'm trying to get 25 years out of this gig, Warren. I hope it works out. It's a long time. Congra <laughs> Congratulations once again. It was All a right. lot of fun. Good. Let's get started. Here we go. 97, obviously the year of the disaster flick. They're coming from everywhere. Bradford, yeah. why now? Why so many? I would probably, Roger, go with a large demographic. I think that... Uh, this appeals to so many different it people. It does. I think you, you, know, you can have the grandmother of whatever age and, and, and the child of seven. It's, it's not really a man's movie, not a woman's movie. I think it's something that everybody can kind of relate to. It's fun, it's exciting, it's explosive and you take people, take people places that they haven't been before. So I think that that, for me, is the reason that they're coming back. And What's uh, the reason for you, exciting. Anthony? Why so many? They've run out of ideas for action movies. I mean, it, there's, there's they nothing. Are action movies. They, they, are, they are action movies. They are action movies, action in a movies. sense. But yeah. see, the thing is, they don't, want to, they don't want to call them action movies anymore because no one cares, really. I mean, you can get Arnold Schwarzenegger up there. He's not making movies anymore that are doing as well as they used to. They still make money. But now you have, like, okay. Jingle all the way, yeah. Yeah, sure. jingle all the way. Great <laughs> oh, example. That was, yeah, that was a disaster movie. That. Yeah, no, not a disaster But... <laughs> I had to walk out of that one. <laughs> but, but see, there, there's no more ideas out there to, to throw out in the action room. So let's, let's put uh, two characters in the backdrop of an exploding volcano. There's your villain. Mm -hmm. There you got something. Right, you've, got, right. you've got, you know, your airplane. You've got all these different types of things. And they did that in the 70s, and it hasn't, it's been a while. And the other thing, too, is Dean Devlin of Independence Day. Sure. I mean, he was a champ. He was going like, you know, and disaster movies inspired us. This is what we want to do. We, wanna, mm -hmm. we wanted to make Independence Day a, a throwback to the disaster movies. Mm -hmm. And that got into people's heads. And they're going, wow. And ironically enough, Twister came out last summer. Right, right. Disaster movie. Two movies came out and they did great. Warren I, James, what is your take on all this disaster mania? Well, I think the other dynamic involved here is that if you make a movie that involves people in conflict, mm -hmm. if you're going to have a bad guy, somebody's mm -hmm. going to look at that person, whoever it is, and take that person as a representative of a group of people. And so with the politically correct speech movement that seems to go around the country, it makes it much easier to do a movie with a villain if you make the villain someone other than a person. Right. Make Mother Nature the villain. Right. Because they are the villain, and you, that way you don't have to have a villain in the movie. Because and and that no one says state. that your villain means that all people of fill in the blank yeah. are bad yeah. because well, it's not a person being bad. Right. Of course, that does raise the question, who speaks for Mother Earth? Okay, okay. now, we recently asked Gail Ann Hurd, mm -hmm. who we all know and love yes. very much, the producer Excellent of the producer. upcoming film Dante's Peak, for her take on all of this recent disaster like mania one. crazy and here's what she had to say. I think that the disaster film has come to the fore because we now have the technology to create natural phenomena convincingly. In the past, it was really fairly hokey, and um, you know, you you really could do a B movie treatment of it um, with all the trappings of of an event picture. But now, we can take you inside a tornado. We can take you. Um, to the, the scene of a volcanic eruption and have it fully believable because of what we can do with visual effects. Okay, Anthony, do you agree with the producer there of Dante's Peak? Yeah, she, she makes a good point because the, the thing is, uh, okay, now that we got this technology, uh, the big deal was, okay, let's make monsters with this stuff, which right. for the most part, the monsters don't always look great unless you got like Steven Spielberg, ILM, they're, they're doing something really spectacular. So the next logical extension is, let's give the audience something they can't see and something that's safe, you know? We don't want to be in the Midwest when there's a tornado or a hurricane, but let's see, let's see mass destruction, let's see tires hitting against a, <laughs> you know, uh, trucks and stuff, you know? That stuff's fun because audiences want to see that because it's, it's, it's a safe release from... But I think the, the question you have to ask is, 
Just because you can do something, does that mean you should? Mm -hmm. and, and just because you can do a believable effect, fill in the blank for whatever the effect mm -hmm. happens to be, does that mean you should make a movie about that effect? I'm, I guess I think movies should be about characters, story, plot, all the other but, things. But Hollywood is and about effects, character. effects should I think, support uh, the movie, not drive it. I think Gail's right. Uh, we certainly know more than we knew 10 years ago. Uh, but I think that uh, just because we know more, you have to mix in the live action. I like to do that in my movies. I like right. to make it more believable with some live action, not all CGI. Because uh, I'm not a believer that we're all the way there yet. And I like the people to believe in what they're saying and have some no, ideas. Yeah, CGI right. works great for, for, for things, but yeah. bad for characters. Right. And very seldom does it work well you for You have characters. to have somebody that you can root for, and that's not the CGI. That's, that's well, a, the, we have to root for a commercial break right now, unfortunately. <laughs> We're not finished here yet, though, folks. More War Room disaster discussion, and we'll talk about the latest Volcano movie. That should be interesting. Mm -hmm. It's all when SF Vortex returns. All right, welcome back to SF Vortex. We're still in the war room with writer Anthony Ferranti, director Bradford May, and SF radio host Warren James. Okay, guys, I'm going to get right to it. I need the formula. I want to know what does it take for a successful disaster film? Bradford, start. Characters that you can root for, I think, is very important. Uh, good explosions, uh, excited, exciting, explosive, but I think characters that you can root is it for. Like a rocket for me, thing? that's you what I want. You want to get behind them throughout the I movie? I think you a, see a through line uh, gets me back to the things that uh, kind of excited me about film, which were musicals, and here I am doing disaster movies, but they always had a, a true through line to them and, and people that you could root for, uh, good storytelling, and I think that's what you need, not just a bunch of blow-ups and explosions and people dying and, and okay. body count. That's right. Yeah. For a good storytelling, good characters. <laughs> Anthony, what do you say? You, um, you need to have something we haven't seen in a while. I mean, uh, yeah. you know, that's why we, we've, we've got, you know, we got volcano stuff. People haven't seen it, but I don't know if we want to see that necessarily. Right. But you know, Twister. You know, we haven't seen that. I mean, when was the last time we saw a Twister movie on on the big screen? So well that done, people too. wanted that. Excellent. And, yeah. and same thing with yeah. uh, Independence Day. Again, we we'll go back to that. That is a disaster movie. It's Aliens from Outer Space. That did well. Mars Attacks didn't do well. Mars Attacks didn't do well because of bad marketing and also because people had seen it. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a big that's a big thing. People are going to want to have to so be interested in it. Comedy, you know, satire as well, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So either you yeah. like that or you don't. You like Tim Burton or you don't. Yeah, yeah. And, Jane, yeah and I thought and I thought Mars Attacks was much better than ID4. It mm -hmm. was much more entertaining well, because ID4 it was, was a bit of a comedy as well. So yeah. it was it was a it was a silly movie, but. It was. It knew it was silly, and so you could have fun enjoying its silliness. Disaster movies. I want to see yeah, a disaster. Yeah, you're asking the question. What is it? No, no, no. We're just disaster movie. Sliding around here. Okay. Uh, I want to see a disaster I can believe in, which means it's got to be realistic. It's okay. got to be portrayed realistic. Science fiction. And a volcano in yeah. L.A. doesn't count as a realistic yeah. Yeah, well, disaster. Yeah, Tarpets. Wow, I'm scared. And, and so then, does it become <laughs> something that the people can relate to and make them think, "Gosh, this really could happen"? Yeah, I think it's got to. I it's got to be a believable it, situation. It becomes that. It becomes something that is is reality that that can happen. I think that's why Twister did so well. Yeah, well, Twister. Because Midwest, do you believe a twister can happen? They in the happen. A volcano in LA. Come on, yeah. All right. Get you know, real. Everybody's jerking their chain on that because of the fact that you have, you know. Look how many here's, tornadoes here's we had Midwest last year, though. Probably more than we've had in, in you know 50 years. But so then, it really played into it. The, the other thing I want in a disaster movie: good characters, but you not bet. just yeah. not just believable characters. But I want to see care. them reacting in the situation right. according to their characterization. Right. I don't want to see everybody do the same thing Absolutely. when the fill in the blank disaster happens. I agree. You well. should establish the characters and their reaction to it should be based on their characterization. And you very that's seldom right. see that. It's well, terrific. Isn't well that's what makes that's what makes a good movie. Pierce yeah. Brosnan yeah. And it doesn't matter what, I, I'll buy that. And it doesn't matter what kind of a movie, you know? It doesn't matter. Disaster movie or love story, you want to see real I think casting is important characters. Warren as well because I think when you're cast for features in television, uh, I like the unknown, people who haven't been there before. Someone yeah. that you can believe is a scientist, someone that you can believe Yeah, is because there what's happening is that people are focusing on the character in the show, not the person personality of the performer. Exactly. They focus on the story and the character. Which is That's why Independence right. Day did well and Mars Attacks didn't. That's okay, right. how about this real quick before yeah. we, before we get out of here. Two there? volcano movies. You guys paying attention? Come yes. on. Hey. Work with me here. Hey, we're two, having fun here. Two <laughs> volcano movies coming out, yeah. right? Yes. Upcoming. Which one are you going to see? Which one you maybe you're not going to see? I think Dante's, uh, Dante's, Dante's Peak is the one. Peak. Yeah, Dante's Peak. It's Dante's got, uh, Peak, I can't, you don't want to miss that. Right? Mm, yeah. No, I think it's going to be a good movie. I think you got uh, Pierce Brosnan with tremendous charm, Linda Hamilton, who's got a big word of mouth as well, and I think Roger Donaldson's an excellent director. And Gail Ann Hurd, who knows how to make these films. She sure yeah. does. Yeah, I mean, no I'll question. watch just about anything that she does because she is really good. But a, a, 
a volcano movie set in L.A.? No. But, but see, that's going to be the joy ride. That's right. going to be like, if they if they deliver uh, just a roller coaster ride, people may go. But again, when time ran out, that was the end of the cycle of the disaster movies back in the 1980. Do we want to see volcano movies? <laughs> An e-ticket with heart. That's where we want to go, right? <laughs> yeah, we, we could see go. a very short cycle on disaster movies yeah. this time. And this was a very Ending short this summer. War. I can't believe we're out of time already. Oh. We have to get out there oh. waving me out of here. Unbelievable. That's it for the war room, folks. Thanks, Roger. Thank, Thank you, you for coming, gentlemen. We Thanks come for back? joining. Okay, good. Don't go anywhere, folks. we got lots more in the Vortex. Birthday, greetings, sci-fi news. Anything you want, it's here in the Vortex. We'll see you in a minute. Yeah.